Iba yung pakiramdam pag ikaw na mismo yung gumagawa. Kasi naramdaman mo na natulungan ka, na, na nakakapaglakad ka. Tapos iniisip mo rin na makakatulong ka na sa mga kasama mong PWDs. Talagang uh, natutuwa ako, kapag, lalo nga pag gumagawa ako ng device, talagang ginagandahan ko rin talaga para at least masisiyan sila na ang ganda ng artificial ko. At uh, nakakalakad ako ng maayos. Tapos, siyempre, kapag may mga, uh, may mga pasyente, siyempre, talagang proud din ako na itataas ko yung paa ko para, ay, PWDs pala yun. Pero pag naglalakad, kala ko normal yun. May mga ganun na naririnig ko. Kaya talagang natutuwa ako kapag, uh, kapag uh, na, na, nakakagawa ako ng mga device at naka, na, nasusot ng maayos ng mga pasyente talaga. Prosthesis, when you say prosthesis, that means ito siya. Prosthesis is supposed to be an external device, externally applied device that is aimed at replacing a missing or amputated body part. So natanggal siya, you get amputated, you need a new leg, you need a prosthesis. Now, an orthosis naman is not meant to replace, it's meant to support. It's also an externally device that is made to support your, the musculoskeletal function of a limb that was impaired by a disease or a medical condition. You see, what happened was, uh, this was offered to UP, and uh, uh, they said they did not have space. When they came to UERM, and I was not a president, uh, I was just a member of the board, I looked at it and I said, ah, this is good. Uh, it so happened that that space across the street uh, was available, they were selling it. So UE decided to, to purchase it. And uh, there was a building, there is a building, so we decided also to rehabilitate that. Pagkatapos kita na assess sir, na-check ko yung stamp mo, ipapresent ako po siya sa uh, doctor namin and sa supervisor ko. Kapag na-approve na po, ikakas na po kita, babalitan ko yung DP mo. Uh, when I had my uh, residency training in rehabilitation medicine at the Philippine General Hospital, there was one thing which was uh, seen as an unmet need, and that was services for amputees. And basically, uh, we were able to identify five factors why this was never responded to uh, appropriately. So one was the cost, the second was the topography of the Philippines, where 7,100 islands, eh. so kalat kalat ba? And knowing that amputees have problems in mobility, so, they also did the companion. Definitely, access is quite a challenge with our topography. The third was, all components, all supplies are all imported. We don't have anything which is locally sourced. The fourth naman was training. There was no trained uh, prosthetist or orthotist who had, formal, uh, who had underwent a formal course to know the, the science of prosthetics and orthotics. Marami tayong, they know the art, but you need the science also. So there are a lot of replacements, unused devices. Yung panglima, ah, data. Yes, which is very important. We don't know how many amputees there are, no? It was in 2010 when Dr. Mundok approached me regarding the plan to establish the Philippine School for Prosthetics and Orthotics. It was also at this particular time when the World Health Organization estimated that 0.5% of the population are in need of prosthetic and orthotic services. And based on the WHO standard, you need 5 to 10 POs per 1 million of the population. That means the Philippines needs around 500 to 1,000 POs 
to be able to serve the Filipino PWDs. So with those five, uh, five barriers, well, we set on the task to answer this one by one. No? At that time, ang pinakamahirap actually was training because that would, that would entail a lot of investment. You need infrastructure, you need faculty, which at that time, wala rin marunong magturo eh. So in order to uh, build up the network and the support system to set up the training, we need to improve awareness. So that's when we did missions. Talagang inikot namin ang buong Pilipinas more for getting a feel of how we could we could strategize. One of the people who, of, of the NGO that supported the Associations for Peace, it was in U.S. We were under U.S. then. And uh, they were very supportive of the fact that uh, training is indeed needed, but PFP USA did not have the funding. So what they did was to send me to a uh, International Society of Prosthetics and Orthotics Convention in the Dominican Republic where we set up a meeting with the president of the ISPO. It was Dan Bloca then. So we met with him and we expressed the need of establishing a school in the Philippines and he, he told me, this is your lucky day. He knows a particular organization that was actually looking for another, another country where they can develop a school. And Siguro, it's what we call uh, serendipity. The person he mentioned, actually, I knew him way, way back also. This was Carson Hart. The information shared with me um, by, by the uh, rehabilitation doctors was extremely important. And we understood very quickly that uh, the, the, the rehab doctors in particular were very interested in, in raising the game. Uh, like the rest of, of the region, uh, the profession of prosthetist orthotus hadn't been taken uh, to the next level at that stage. Um, there, there, was a, there was some short courses had been run, some in-house training, uh, some low-tech technology uh, had been imported um, into the country. And it was like everywhere else in the world, uh, the situation was that most practitioners were artisans and uh, had not been through a professional training. Now, to give you some context, uh, full professional training in the United States really didn't start to the late 60s. Full professional training in, in the United Kingdom didn't start until 1976. Uh, I was class number three. Like many of the people who graduated from, uh, from, from UERM, uh, I was one of the early intakes in my school in the UK. So I knew what it felt like. I knew what the pressure would be like. I knew how difficult it would be to change hearts and minds from old artisan technology to uh, a technology where the patient really is at the center of the treatment and uh, that the, the, the practitioner, the clinician would be well equipped with the knowledge, the experience, and for me, the biggest thing, the heart for people with disability. Setting up a school is not uh, an easy thing. It's not just putting in funds, no? You have to put in a lot of a support system so that after 10 years, which ends now, it will still continue. So those preparations were made even at the start of the uh, relationship between UERM and uh, it was Cambodia Trust then, by the way, when this was uh, inked, it was not exceed, it was still Cambodia Trust. So when Carson Hart came here, he made, he made sure that one, political wise, the Philippines is prepared. So, nako ang hirap nun. We had to let the president of Nippon meet with President Aquino. So straight from the plane in the airport, uh, when, when Mr. Sasakawa came down, we immediately brought him to Malacanang to have a meeting with President Aquino. President Aquino made sure also that all the government agencies needed 
to support the development of the school were there. And uh, Mr. Sasaka was, was very happy because uh, he, uh, he, had a, a, a very, he had an audience with then President Corazon Aquino whom he admired so much. And he was, more, he was very elated that he was also able to meet the son. So that finally solidified the relationship between the Nippon Foundation, Cambodia Trust, and UERM, and the ground was set for the school to be started. The Nippon Foundation provided the funding, EXCEED provided the technical expertise, while UERM provided the logistics, infrastructure, and utilities. With PSPO as a pioneering initiative, UERM constructed a four-story Philippine School of Prosthetics and Orthotics building known as the Tanyan Key Building. Okay. It was my pleasure to begin my time with PSPO before its bricks and mortar were in place. On a visit to Manila shortly after the first MOU was signed, I was fortunate to be included in a visit to number seven Capi Ligan Street, a then boarding house that was one of the proposed sites that would become the home of the new prosthetics and orthotics program. First of all, I would like to thank you for joining us in this memorable landmark occasion for not only for the University of the East, Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center, but for the country as well. For today, we are going to inaugurate and bless the building for a new course in the country, the Philippine School for Prosthetics and Orthotics. And I'm told we are only the fifth in Asia and the 12th in the world. So this indeed is a remarkable and momentous occasion for all of us. It was October when we had the MOU signing. Even if we already have the financial support, we have the technical expertise from EXCEED. The problem now is how do we open the school the next school year, which is June 2011. Uh, even if we have the, that vision, we know the need. If we don't pass this accreditation, even if we have the land and the building, we cannot run the program. We were actually prepared at that time, thanks to the help of the uh, support staff of uh, College of PT. Of course, Helen was there, Tepe was there, and all the other initial uh, exceed the, the first batch of exceed uh, faculty members. It, it, it happened very fast. We practically stayed inside of the building until 10 to 12 o'clock just to finish all the the materials later on there was also the ispo accreditation this is the part where we had to read through materials for the international accreditation what happened was we only applied for a category two but when they came they told us that your program is not a category two but a category one that's why we have a category one accreditation up until now, which we have to sustain. So in, in that way, it's it's daunting. It's a daunting task, but, but I guess with the support of UERM, and of course, uh, with the help of the faculty members, we're able to reach the end. And this, this is a very important milestone, not only for UERM, but also for the Philippines, since this is the first and the only school in the country. I was part of the scholars of the Nippon Foundation who ventured off to Thailand to um, study for four years and train there in Mahidol University. It was a very interesting experience, you know, kasi pagdating ko doon, ang daming technologies. 
So, as the scholars, we made it a point na ma-absorb namin lahat ng kaya namin ma-absorb doon sa experience namin na yun. Actually, thank you to UARM and Nippon Foundation for starting, starting everything up. Ang balik namin was 2015. So, tumatawa yung mga kasama ko dito because when, I, when we went back, akala nila tayo kami. <laughs> Nakala nila tayo kami, they were even doing this. <laughs> Kasi naka-full uniform kami, no? Pero alam mo, thankfully, exceed technical experts, the foreign faculty, and we already have the first batch of graduates then um, as members of the faculty already. They were doing a great job. It was actually very difficult to, to run the program with expat faculty members in constant transition. It was a challenge in the sense that all these expats are actually coming from different areas. So they all have their own ideas of how it will run, although we have the program director uh, guiding us on this. Now, here comes the local faculty members who were the scholars we sent to Mahidol University. And they all also have their own ideas on how the program will run. But in the middle, towards the transition into having the local faculty members, we're already laying the groundwork for um, the local faculty taking over uh, some of the functions. Even before um, they came, he came back. Uh, I'm personally studying already their profile and I already have an idea where I should place them. I was appointed as the director around 2018. So the latter half of the program, that last five years, is very crucial because it's focused on making sure that PSPO is running with less and less guide rails from um, Nippon and um, exceed. So it was a challenge for us. PSPO is not your ordinary institution. No? Hindi sila, your, your faculty members, they are not your ordinary faculty members. Day in, day out, yung curriculum activities, yung curricular activities are just part of their job. Pero on that latter half of the program, we were in the middle of collaborating with other organizations to make sure that our services reach far and wide. And it was also the, also the time that we were lobbying with other organizations for the PhilHealth mobility packages. We were collaborators to that to make sure that there are government subsidized devices for people with disabilities across all age groups. Beyond our usual responsibilities are te as teachers and as clinicians in the Philippine School of Prosthetics and Orthotics, um, half of what we do is collaborating with government and non-government agencies. At isa sa mga importanteng agency na nakatrabaho natin ay ang Philippine Health Insurance. Sa pamamagitan ng Philippine Health Insurance or PhilHealth, nagkaroon ng pagkakataon ang isang pasyenteng nangangailangan ng prosthetic at orthotic devices na magkaroon ng affordable at accessible na solusyon sa kanyang pangailangan. Isa sa mga naging problema natin ay wala ring formal na pag, uh, pagsasanay ang isang technician sa prosthetics and orthotics. No? Kaya uh, sa tulong ng Physicians for Peace, no? uh, nailapit natin sa Technical Education and Skills Development Authority yung paggawa ng training regulations for prosthetics and orthotics. Kadalasan, uh, nanggagaling sa ibang bansa yung ating mga kagamitan. Nakita natin na nagkakaroon ng constraints sa paggawa ng mga prosthetic and orthotic devices. Kaya nagsimula yung mga pag-aaral natin sa mga renewable materials uh, matibay ang ating pakikipagugnayan sa Department of Science and Technology para makita natin kung alin bang mga uh, sources na makikita natin sa Pilipinas 
na pwede natin gamitin sa paggawa ng prosthetic and orthotics. And then, at the very last years of the program, we were hit by the pandemic. The pandemic struck in March 2020, so uh, just like any of the different uh, universities, we had to reinvent and find ways of doing things. And um, luckily, the university had already invested in a learning management system. But you know, even with the learning management system, and even with a good curriculum, if you don't have the people running the program, and is willing to be trained to do it online, it will be very difficult. Aside from that, this is a skills-based uh, program. So you can imagine how we would be assured that our students would grad will graduate with the right skills. So this is where the reinvention of how the laboratory was done. One of the things that was done uh, uh, to this program was to invest in a lot of online materials so that we can run the laboratory online. So that means the faculty members can stay inside the building, the laboratory, the patient can stay at home or the patient can actually be in the building, but the student can actually stay at home, especially at the height of the pandemic. And also, we had the contingency kits. So that means materials uh, were sent out to the students so that the laboratory can be done online. This is, I guess, one of the uh, best features of the, uh, the program. Uh, we were able to carry out the mission of still producing graduates uh, uh, for this program, which will answer the need and the vision that we, we would like to give uh, the Filipino PWDs. I like to produce it dito. And ngayon, try mong i-extend uh, your wrist. Mag-open siya, di ba? Oo, oh, okay. And then, try mong i-flex niya your wrist. So ngayon, when instructing the patient, instead of asking them to imagine opening and closing the hand, ask them to engage the muscles. Lot for, kunyari, trans-tragal yung hand. Lahat naman siguro ng PO, ito yung gustong i-foresee in the future. Kasi as of now, I think we're only like 50 plus CPOs in the country. And then we have, I think as of um, 2010 statistics ng Philippines is around 1.4 million na PWDs in the country. And then part of it, yung mobility impairments. Sobrang dami ng PWDs. Sobrang daming nangangailangan ng uh, PO services. Concentrated ang mga PO right now talaga sa Metro Manila. And then, I think mabibilang lang namin kasi um, sa AFCO, no, yung association ng mga CPOs. So, we have a tracker din kung saan na napupunta ang ating mga CPOs in the country. And then, I think mabibilang mo lang kung asa na yung mga PO na nasa Visayas, nasa um, Luzon, nasa Mindanao. So, kalat-kalat na kami, konti-konti, pero of course, meron pa rin barrier, meron pa rin um, lack of accessibility yung mga pasyente natin na nangangailangan ng PO services. Habang nag-aaral, hindi pa ganun nagsisink in sa akin kung gaano ka-important yung uh, profession na to. At uh, nang graduate kami, uh, nag-postgrad intern, sa hospital po kami naka-designate, so mga paying patients. Tapos nung nag-work po ko dito sa Davao, na-realize ko po yung difference na parang mas nakaka-fulfill po for me na mag-serve sa mga underprivileged na mga uh, patients compared sa mga paying. Uh, Parehas pare -pare naman po silang patients. Pero iba po kasi talaga yung, ano eh, yung uh, tagos sa puso kapag nagpasalamat sa'yo yung pasyente na binagawa mo lang yung trabaho mo. I remember pa nga, we were doing prosthetics first. 
and then we're supposed to take a cast of a stump but because it's just among ourselves you know we're taking like a cast half of the leg and we just like close it for us to make a shape of a stump so it, it's nothing really you know it's not real it's just like for us to, to see what to expect pero no fifth year nga ando na nag-start na magkita na kami ng mga patients so dun na ako nagkaroon ako ng moment na parang they were very grateful you know we, we had those moments na parang ay grabe ito pala yung parang gusto ko yung ganito yung purpose ko sa life parang i think this is something na I would uh, be passionate about and I would definitely enjoy, you know, doing for a living. My drive when I started was to work with an institution that would help a lot of people, not for the money, but for the cause. So that's why I moved uh, I moved to Davao and served Mindanao. Yung mga mentors ko kasi namin nung panahon ko ay ano pa, mga foreigner, no? Parang lagi ho nila sinasabi sa amin na you should be able to serve everyone in the Philippines or you should be able to extend your help for everyone in the Philippines, not only the people here in the metro. So, it's a factor siguro sa mga mentors ko noon na hindi lang kami magstay sa metro but also to accept opportunities outside. Um, thank you to Nippon Foundation na sila yung nag-provide ng kumbaga ano yung kailangan ng isang school to to be ano to be running no and to give the best things para ano uh, ma transfer yung knowledge na meron from ibang bansa para dito locally uh, mas mapropagate pa siya yung sustainability ng course parang for me <laughs> Ayoko siyang mawala. Ayoko ayoko kumbaga hindi makilala yung profession. They kind of set the standards for me at the time. So, this was like the best education anyone can get providing students, you know, with dif- different teaching styles and bringing different knowledge that brought innovation for the level of healthcare in the Philippines. Nung nag-aaral kasi ako nung high school, ayoko na parang napagod ako yung nakaupo lang sa classroom. And knowing na yung PO nga daw is more on workshop side, hands-on ka eh. Kumbaga, nandun ka agad yung experience. First year pa lang kami, nakakahawa kami ng mga different type of machines. Siyempre, dahil sa difference din in culture, na gusto ko yung teaching style nila. No, mas parang dito na ako talagang ginanahan mag-aral, hindi ka tulad dati. Na parang, uy, gusto ko mag... I wanna work hard, sabi ko sa sarili ko. I saw a booth like a university booth in our um, province. Um, it was a very rare opportunity because it was just a day before they packed up and then I saw it. It stuck with me for a year um, when I was in Ateneo and then eventually I decided to enroll myself in secret to the PO course and I never regret that decision. It was one of the best decisions I made. Nung wala po ang prosthetic, more as uh, scratches sa kong saklay, so, which is may, uh, medyo ano, sagabal talaga siya. Pag nagta-travel, ang hirap po kasi mag-travel lang nakasaklay kasi di ba, dito, ganyan, pag maraming tao, di ba, hindi ka masyadang pwede makipagsabayan kasi may ano ka, baka matapakan mo sila or mabunggo ka, out of balance, ganun. Like, tapos yung sa underarm, pag naka-scratches ka, or kung yung sa kamay lang po, nag-iitim. So, sa mara nung, nag, nung nagkaroon po ng prosthetic, mas dum, para saan po, ah, gumaan, mas dumali, sa, mas dumali po sa akin yung prang everyday lifestyle ko. Like, nakapunta na ako sa dsan, nang hindi, ala lang, hindi ako, hindi ako magdadalawang isip na kailangan kong may kasama palagi, ganito, para may alala, ganun. Nung nagkaroon na po ako, hindi na. Ano, I can go wherever I want. Like, um, kahit may tao na kaya ko nang, kaya ko na na mag-isa. Kaya ko na nga po mag-travel mag-isa. Like, unlike before na hindi ako pinapayagan. <laughs> so, nakapag-explore-explore ako. Ganun. So, mas dumali po siya. Kasi nung nagkaroon din po ako ng prosthetic na, um, ayun nga po, parang, Nagkaroon ako ng ano pa, ng confidence pa sa sarili ko. Like, 
hindi na ako na insecure na uy sila na kapag sa ganitong kind ng ano um, pag style nila ng damit tapos nitong nagkaroon na po ako ayun na nakakatawa kasi I can say na ano mas mas naging okay ako nung nagkaroon kasi yun nga nasasot ko na yung mga damit na gusto ko and then kapag bumibili bumibili po ako ng mga shoes ko like hindi na ako nagdadalawang isip kahit bumili ako ng um mga Nike, gano'n, Adidas. Kasi, nagagamit ko na parehas. Unlike before, nung nanghihina lang ako na bibili ako ang mahal-mahal tapos isa lang gagamitin ko. Ang unfair! <laughs> so, ayun. <laughs> so, ayun, nakakatawa na nga. Ayun, nagagawa ko na yung mga gano'ng bagay na hindi ako manghihina yan. <laughs> Kasi po kasi dati, ah, ang pangarap ko daw is maging um, balerina. Well, nagsasawa naman po talaga ako dati. Naalala ko, fear pa talaga sa man ko. Na pag nanonood ako ng Barbie Street, eh, ginagaya ko talaga. Pero since po, nung napunta po ako sa hospital na, and then nakikita ko ang dami yung patient, ano, um, sobrang dami nag-aantay, ganito. Di ba po ganun kapag sa hospital, parang talabas ng hospital, ang dami nag-aantay. Tapos, ang dami nung kailangan na patient na kasi katuhin. Yung mga umiiyak na na bata kasi masakit na yung ganito, ganyan-ganyan nila. So, sabi ko, bakit parang ano, parang hindi na kasi kaso lahat, parang kulang. Sabi ko, parang gusto ka na ano. So, ayun, since nung nakita ko po, gusto ko na mag-doctor, sabi niya. Walang nakapigil sa 30-year-old Mountain Province para-athlete na si Jefferson Biteng nang kanyang tapusin ang hamon ng 100-meter Ninja Obstacle Course Race sa The Glades Timberland Heights, San Mateo Rizal nitong weekend. Kasama ang iba pang different... Kasi taga-bundok din kasi ako so ang hirap na nagtatago ko lang talaga sa ano sa inyo. Kaya kung may mga pagkakataon na, at may kakayahan naman, Subukan natin na hanapin yung uh, ano, kaya natin gawin. Kasi alam kong marami, marami, ta, marami tayong ipapakita at marami tayong kakayahan. Hindi lang uh, 4K PWDs tayo, eh, uh, mananatili lang tayo sa bahay. Kasi, kasi ganun ang naramdaman ko rin dati na talagang nagkukulong lang din talaga ako sa bahay. Sabi ko, eh, nabubuhay naman ako. Kumakain naman ako. Pero sinubukan ko talaga, subukan natin kung uh, mag-apply, mag, uh, marami naman institution na para sa PWDs at marami naman din mga company na tumatanggap din sa mga PWDs. So, try lang natin, huwag tayong mawawala ng, uh, ano, ng pag-asa kasi kung hahayaan natin yung sarili natin na hindi natin mag-ambisyon pa ng medyo kaya natin gawin, Walang mangyayari talaga sa atin, talagang uh, hanggang doon lang talaga ang buhay natin. Kaya subukan natin, marami, tal marami pang uh, kaya natin gawin. Kaya labas na kayo dyan, huwag kayong magtago. Kaya kaya natin to. <laughs> I see a sustainable Philippine School of Prosthetics and Orthotics in the next years to come. I always think, along with the local faculty, that if there's a need, there will always be a way to carry on. We will continue to do what we are doing. We take it as PSPO is not your ordinary, not your ordinary institution. It's a national symbol that mountains can be moved to a more inclusive society. So I dream of more students, more graduates who will penetrate the far corners of the Philippines. I do not dream for PSPO to be the center of everything. I want healthcare to be accessible everywhere. And I want our students leading that. I wish for the next 10 years to be blessed with the same dedication, passion, and commitment as the first 10 years. I hope that you will never forget the real victory is for persons with disability who benefit from access to quality services. I wish that all PSPO alumni will recognize their responsibility 
to mentor the next generation of professionals so that barriers can continue to be removed and opportunities continue to abound just as those who have established and led the program have role modeled over the last decade. Best wishes for the very next chapter. We'll be watching you with pride for the next generation and for the great achievements of a great program. We've started something. We've created some momentum together. Uh, you have picked it up and are running with it. Uh, it's fantastic to see uh, the young leadership of the Department of Prosthetics and Orthotics at UARM pick this up and run with it. I'm very proud of who you've become. I'm very proud of your passion. I'm very proud of your dedication uh, to, to this profession. And all that I ask you is that you take this and, and, and run as far and as fast as you can uh, to really improve the lives of the millions of uh, persons uh, who this morning are sitting on the floor because they have no alternative. The achievements of our graduates could not have happened without the technical expertise of EXCEED. To Mr. Carson Hart and all the past faculty members, our heartfelt thanks for the patience and dedication you devoted to our students. Also, all this would not have been possible without the kind generosity of the Nippon Foundation. Words cannot express our profound gratitude to Mr. Yohei Sasakawa for your trust to UERM and PSPO. Beyond the prestige earned by the university, your benevolence lives a lasting and palpable betterment in the lives of Filipinos with disabilities. Today, I am truly delighted to hand over Philippine School of Prothetics and Orthotics to the University of the East. The guiding principle of the Nippon Foundation is one world, one family. We share pains and hopes and support each other, cutting across boundaries of politics, beliefs, religion, ethnicity, and national borders. We conduct humanitarian activities globally to eradicate prejudice and discrimination that still exist in many parts of the world. In particular, to build an inclusive society in which persons with disability can become active members of society. We support them to study at higher education institutions and promote disability employment. PSPO, which EXCEED has been managing, is a very important initiative that forms the core of our activities. I'd like to express my utmost respect to you, Mr. Carson Hart, for your dedicated efforts over many years to promote the growth and development of the school. Let me share with you a story from 11 years ago. At the time, the decision was made to inaugurate PSPO. Ms. Rice Lowry was an aspiring law student at that time. She had been badly injured by a handmade bomb and was hospitalized to have both of her legs amputated below the knees. She said, I want to go back to school even without my legs. This was God's will. 
I was deeply touched together with many Filipino citizens. I promised her that I would give her prosthetics legs and requested Mr. Carson Hart to make them. This became one of the first works of PSPO. Later, I was happy to hear from Lysa that she was practicing boxing with her prosthetic legs and that she had delivered a speech on behalf of persons with disability at the United Nations high-level meeting on disability and development. Thus began the activities of PSPO, which is now the first education and training institution in the Philippines to meet the standards of the ISPO. It has graduated some 100 professionals to date. Through production of prosthetics and orthotics, PSPO supports persons with disability regain their courage and self-esteem and participate in society. These activities are to become a foundation for creating an inclusive society that I aspire to. Let us continue to work together in creating an inclusive society in the Philippines that enables everyone to deliver their potential. As soon as the coronavirus pandemic subsides, I'd like to visit PSPO at the first destination in my overseas travel. Again, I am delighted to be able to hand over PSPO to the University of the East and believe that PSPO will continue to give hope to many people. Thank you very much. The University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center, Inc., through the College of Allied Rehabilitation Sciences, awards this token of appreciation to the Nippon Foundation and exceed worldwide. In celebration of the 10-year partnership of UERM, MMCI, exceed worldwide, and the Nippon Foundation, this bust is being given to honor your outstanding contribution in furthering our shared goals of improving the quality of life of Filipinos with disabilities through the establishment of the Philippine School of Prosthetics and Orthotics, given this 31st day of July, 2021. It was President Magsaysay's compassion for those in need that won the admiration, respect, and trust of the Filipino people. As our institution was renamed in 1957 to UERM in honor of the late president, it is UERM's desire to produce professionals who embody the core values of integrity, commitment, social responsibility, and compassion just as Ramon Magsaysay did during his life. The 10 years of partnership with the Nippon Foundation and SID had contributed greatly in our drive to live by these virtues and values through the Philippine School of Prosthetics and Orthotics. Through PSPO, UERM and the Nippon Foundation have provided students opportunities to be in a profession that allows them to touch so many lives and be pioneers in whichever path they choose. Through this partnership, we've expanded the field of rehabilitation and have 
push boundaries to offer appropriate, affordable, and accessible assistive technologies for all. From hardly any place locally, offering PO services, our prosthetics and orthotists have now reached all three major island groups of the country. We were able to join the efforts that paved the way to the creation of national health insurance benefits that allow access to prosthetics and orthotics services across all age groups and hampered by economic status. Within a decade of shifts in national academic paradigm and despite the pandemic, the robust BS prosthetics and orthotics program has flourished as a national and international bastion of academic excellence. I would like to extend my gratitude to EXCEED for providing a global outlook to PSPO. Your technical expertise has helped enable PSPO to become what it is now, dynamic and globally competitive. Ten years seem like a truly short time, as there is still so much to be done. This pandemic has brought about unprecedented changes to the country's healthcare system. It has introduced yet another wall in between health services and those who need it. But as I, on behalf of URM, now officially accept the handing over of PSPO, I accept it with a firm commitment to let the legacy of our partnership live on. The students, faculty, staff, and alumni of PSPO will all remember that we are known to traverse barriers to healthcare. PSPO will always be a beacon of hope and a symbol of change for this nation. Thank you, Nippon and Exceed, for a fruitful 10 years. Thank you for helping us welcome this new era in good hope and high spirits. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you.